In this video, I'm going to show you how to model the flexible animal for 3D printing. So first thing I did was create a new document in our 3D printing folder, just called it Flexi Animal. Then I'm going to start with creating a sketch on our top plane here. Go ahead and N for normalize, P to make the planes invisible. And then I went ahead and found an image of my animal on Google. So when you're searching for an image, try and type in 2D or vector or a silhouette to get kind of the outline of the animal that you're looking for. So I'm just going to insert image here. I've already got my image imported just like we did for the keychain and logo project. Go ahead and click on this. And you're just going to draw a rectangle to bring your image in. Now, just like we've done in the past, we're going to go ahead and trace our image using lines, circles, rectangles, splines, whatever it need be. Now that I have my image traced out, I want to go ahead and use this fix constraint here. And that's going to turn all these lines black, which means that when we start putting our tabs in, it's not going to move our trace lines at all. So next, I'm going to go ahead and just delete the image just so we can see it a little bit better. And I'm going to draw a line that is five inches long. Because the max dimension that we can use for our project is five inches, we want to make sure that our maximum dimension on our animal is five inches. So I'm just going to use transform here, select the animal, and then you can use this arrow here to scale it up or down. And it doesn't have to be exactly five inches. You can be a little over, a little under, just kind of keep it as close as you can to it. So that's about five inches here. I'm just going to set it to the side. So now we have our animal scaled properly. We have it all traced out. We have all the lines fixed so that our tabs aren't going to move them at all. Now we need to insert lines for where the animal is going to flex. So I'm going to use the line tool here and I want it to flex at the tail and maybe in the middle here. And I want you to have at least three sections or more. So the more the merrier obviously but have at least these three separate sections. And I expect you guys to use a different animal something a little more complicated than what I'm doing here. So now that we have our lines where it's split, we need to have the gaps between our different parts of our animal. So we're going to use our offset tool, and we're going to offset this 0.1. And we'll do it. It doesn't matter which way you offset it, whichever makes more sense for your part. Now that we have it at 0.1, I just want to use my extend tool here just to make sure that these lines go all the way to the edge. And this one looks like it goes past, so that shouldn't be a problem. So we have our gaps. The other thing I want to do is make sure that this one is vertical there. All right, so now those are black as well, so those aren't going to move around while we're inserting our tab. So the next thing to do is going to be a center point rectangle. And we're just going to find the center point here, draw in a rectangle. Same thing on this side, find a center point of one of those. And now that we have our rectangles, we can start dimensioning them. So we want our rectangles, our tabs, to be 0.3 wide. The dimension of the length of those tabs, we want those to be 0.7 long. So the other thing we want is a gap around these tabs. So we're going to use our offset tool again, select all sides of our rectangle here. And we want this to be 0.3, or sorry, 0.03. Same thing on the other one, offset at 0 0.03. So now we have our tabs, we have our pockets, we can go ahead and hit the green check mark. So now when we're extruding this, we want to extrude the side that the longer part of the tab is going in, if that makes sense. So. It looks something like this. We've got our 0.1 gap in between it. We've got this is sticking out 0.4 from here, from this edge here. And we're going to do the same thing on this side. So we're going to have one side that's going to have these tabs and one side that's going to have these pockets. You're going to have three different parts here. Go ahead and hit the green check mark. Or actually, before we do that, we want to extrude this at 0.375 because that's our maximum thickness. All right, so now you can see we've got our tabs, we've got gaps between our parts, and we've got our pockets for where our tabs are going to insert. So now, if we printed it just like this, we're going to have three different parts that aren't going to stay together. 
So we've got to add those pegs in here to make it so that it'll actually stay together. So the first thing I'm going to do is add the pegs into this part here. So I'm going to hide my other two parts. I'm going to do a new sketch on this face here. And I'm going to use my center point circle tool. And I just want to make this centered in both sides. So I'm just highlighting over the center so that it'll snap to our center here. And I'm going to make that a diameter of 0.1. So we've got that side. Go ahead and do a new sketch on this side as well. Same thing, highlighting over that, finding our center, 0.1. Green check mark. I'm going to do extrude on both those and just make sure that it doesn't go past the part. So now you can see we've got our pegs on there. This part is all done. So we need to now go to our other two parts and we need to add the holes for the pegs to go through. If we printed it like this, it would be one solid part and it wouldn't be able to swivel at all. And obviously you're going to repeat these steps for however many tabs you want. So I'm going to do a new sketch, this top face here. And so that we get that location exactly correct, we're going to use a tool called Use. And what that's going to do is actually project this cylinder oh, to our part. So I'm just clicking on the outline of that circle. It's going to project that shape right there. And then we can use our offset tool again to make that hole a little bit bigger than the peg so that we have some clearance. So I want you to offset that 0 0.025. So that's going to make that hole a diameter of 0.125, giving us plenty of clearance between there. We're going to do the same thing on this tab here. Another new sketch. Do use. Click on that hole. We're going to do offset again and offset it 0 0.025. All right, so now, go ahead and finish that sketch. Let's hide our second part here, just to make it a little bit easier to see. We're gonna go ahead and use the extrude tool. You're gonna click on both of these circles on all your parts, and then I'm gonna do remove. For my merge scope here at the bottom, so that's basically what is it gonna remove it from. We don't want it to remove it from part two, so we're just gonna select these two parts. Hit the green check mark. We can hide our sketches if they're showing. And you can see we have those holes. So now if we bring back part two, we have holes and the pegs. We've got our tabs. We've got our pockets. So our flexible animal is ready to print. At this stage, um, I would suggest one more thing to add to this is we're going to use the fillet tool. And we're just going to fillet these corners here. So that way it gives a little more range of motion. This isn't completely necessary, but it'll make it so that your animal can flex a little bit more. All right, and we're going to do just a 0.2 radius for that. Hit the green check mark. Feel free to add any fillets or chamfers to the edges as you see fit. And then you'll follow the video to bring it into Bamboo Studio, slice it, and print it on one of the A1 minis. So that's how you're going to make the flexible animal.